Right, so uh, welcome back. Uh, this is a key point and you're still listening to us on 3FM, also watching us on TV3 and online at 3news.com and also on Facebook at TV3 Ghana. So we're moving on next to look at the issue about double uh, salary payments that uh, were received by some MPs of the Sixth Parliament. And that issue has come up in recent times following um, an epistle that was released by uh, the immediate past Special Prosecutor, uh, Mr. Martin Amidou. In the studio, I have with me Honorable Roxin Dafiamepo. He is the MP for South Dai. You're welcome, Honorable. Thank you. It's good to have you. And on Zoom, we have Mr. Richard Nyama, uh, Deputy Communications Director of the new Patriotic Party NPP, to have this conversation. Um, we will, let's start off with this. Um, let me start with you, uh, Honorable. Um, this issue first broke, I believe, sometime in 2018. Mm -hmm. And yes, there was talk about it, but it went down, now it's come up. But no, before 2017, that, actually. 2017, that's true. Now, uh, before we even go into that conversation, uh, let's take a listen to a statement uh, or a reaction to this issue by uh, Dr. Dominic Ayine, former Deputy Attorney General and the Honorable MP for Bolgatanga East Constituency. Let's take a listen to this. Okay, when it was pointed out that this thing happened under President Kufo, it means that it's a system failure. And that certain persons, including the Honorable Chairman Sabunzu, all right, and then the former Speaker of Parliament, were also, I mean, beneficiaries, if so to speak, of a double salary, I mean, regime. So it is it's a system failure. If they do not set it up in such a way that, you know, uh, persons who are appointed from, per, I mean, a Parliament are paid from one source. But if they, I mean, uh, they are being paid from different sources and they, they, are, over, they are overpaid, all right. The, the best step to take is to write to them and indicate the sum that has been overpaid, and as that. And in fact, under the uh, public, uh, I mean, the laws of this country, there are the laws governing the public sector. In fact, you cannot even take the entire sum from the, the this in the, the salary from the salary at once. No, certainly no, it has to be staggered. To a payment plan. So I don't see where is the criminality. The NPP, you know, almost anything that happens under the NDC, they want to come and then make us look bad. Okay. Okay. We, I mean, look, I am prepared to fight the Attorney General any day on this matter, all the way to the Supreme Court. My integrity is at stake. The integrity of my, my colleagues is at stake. You don't criminalize an otherwise, I mean, non-criminal conduct. Right. So you heard Dr. Dominic Ayune in there reacting to the issue about double salary payments, indicating that, well, this is an issue that is not peculiar to NDC members of parliament only, but some members uh, of parliament from the NPP during the uh, administration of President Kufour also had similar uh, issues. Honorable, let's, let's start off the conversation here. Uh, what, what are we to make of this situation here with double salary payments? Yes, uh, Criminality or not, yes, prosecutions yes, or yes, not? What yes, is the situation? Uh, thank you very much. You know, this is a matter of law. And uh, properly, properly anchored in the Constitution. We speak of the conditions of service of Article 71 office holders. Now, now, if we may look at what Article 71 exactly says, 71.1 says that the salaries and allowances payable and the facilities and privileges available to. There's a long chain of category of, 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 of yes, uh, public servants, including the president himself, the vice, the chief justice, mm -hmm. members of parliament. But because it's about members of parliament, I will want to zero in there. Sure. Including chief executives. Now, if you go to 71 3, it says that for the purposes of this article, and except as otherwise provided in this constitution, salaries includes allowances, facilities, and privileges, and retiring benefits or awards. So when we speak of double salaries, it's not really about what, what comes to you at the end of the month. 
it also includes what is actually paid to your maid servant, for instance. Because those are the facilities attendant upon your office. Mm. Your driver. That's what the constitution is saying. I am not saying mm -hmm. so. Now, the other thing we must look at is that how is crime determined in this country? If we want to say that somebody has committed a crime, two things must happen. The menstrua must certainly be established that in, in committing the actus, you form the menstrua. Now, can we really locate menstrua in all this on the part of the persons who are alleged to have received the double salary? So before we even get to the menstrua, which yeah. is the intention yes. behind it, yeah. Question is, so like, yes, for the purposes of, you know, yes. educating the public, yes. when you say men's and actors, yes. you, I mean, not everybody would know, but yes. the men's wear is actually the mind yes. that a person has yes. in carrying the out intent. the actors, which is the action. Yes, so that I see that this is a double salary mm -hmm. and I'll take it and I'll return it. Exactly. So for act, for, for the, this issue yes. we have, the allegation or the offense that has been bandied around now is what's stealing. That's what the CID indicated back in 2018, yes, I believe, yes. that's stealing. Yes. And so for stealing, then you appropriate something, you take yes. something which is not yours. Yes. And the intention is that you're yes. keeping you it. You keep it. Exactly. Yes. So that is the actus reus, is the yes. act of taking yes. something, and then the mens rea yes. is the, that intention yes. to keep it, to deny the person. I would have gone there, but you have. Exactly, so, because so we So now let's go to into the structure sure. of the arrangement. Abna, I'm a member of parliament. Now, the NDC is given the opportunity to govern. And I'm appointed Minister of Interior. Now, the convention is that because the salaries and facilities and those that turn up on the office of a member of parliament is lower than that of a minister of state, the tendency is for members of parliament who get the opportunity to serve in the executive as well are shifted from the salaries uh, as defined by the constitution. So once I say salary, all the facilities no, no things, are, yeah. are therefore moved from what they previously exist on as a member of parliament now to as, as a minister, minister of state properly so-called. Now, Abna, the shift happens swiftly. The announcement is made Communication sent to Parliament, arrangements are made, you are vetted, you go through, the President appoints you. But the systemic change to move you from the conditions of service as a member of Parliament to that of as a Minister of State doesn't happen as swiftly as this. In fact, the briefing I had yesterday tells me that, in fact, for, for some time in the past, it didn't even happen in the entire life of, of, of that parliament. And so if later calculations are made and determinations are made that this is what I do you, for the state to pay you, the state doesn't pay up front. They stagger the payment. And so the payment comes in piecemeal. So how are you then accused of having received a double salary? Okay, so okay. like the honorable, the former, like okay. my, my, my brother said, uh, 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 Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Aini. If a determination is made, then it is up to the accountant general to write to this identified category of people for them to refund. And if the, if the sum refundable is such that it will have a, an economic toll on them, then arrangements are made. Sure. In any case, some of them are retiring on their salaries. You, you understand? Because that's what the Constitution mm. says. That you see that they write, they refer to retiring benefits or awards. So these are persons who are not going anywhere. So we need to debate this matter properly mm. and put it to rest. Right. So in, uh, what you're saying is, Pending the determination of what they are due yes. in terms of that shift yes. from being just um, MPs to now to being ministers being of, state, of state, 
they are what what we understand is that they are paid on account with a view to you know having that determination made and then if there's a balance that should be paid by reason of maybe an, an increase in what yes. they were paid then that happens but if it's more to or less then whatever returns that ought to be done uh, would have I'm to be not, done i am I'm, I'm surprised to hear this because the briefing i had yesterday for the entire life of that mm. parliament the, the determination was not made, that the payment on account was not made. So they were still existing on their salary as a member of parliament. Okay, so this is a statement that we have from the... And, and I want to Secretary. suspect that this on account payment must have been informed because of this development. Exactly, and this is by Mr. Setekwe. Very well. Back in, I believe, 2018, okay. he was given an account of what yes. happened. And he indicates that, let me say, he says quickly that... Um, he says, I also instructed, okay, so at, at, at the point of the audit by the Auditor General, it was detected that a handful of Article 71 office holders had been paid more in advance than others. Exactly. So more in advance okay. than others. Which however, you mean that on account? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So however, the amounts paid to this category of office holders were not in excess of their salary entitlement as okay. determined by the Presidential Emoluments Committee. Commission. You understand? Yes. So th there was an more payment for some than others, but there wasn't more than was what had been determined. Exactly. What was due. Exactly. So let, let's quickly go to Mr. Richard Yama. Mr. Richard Yama, can you hear me? Yes, uh, I'm not going to hear you. Great. So uh, you've been following this conversation. Indeed, this story broke right um, after the NPP came into office. And the suggestion was that, yes, there had been some wrongdoing and there was going to be some prosecutions in respect of this, but no prosecution so far has happened. We've had Mr. Martin Amidu release his epistle, making all sorts of allegations in there, which we'll be touching on briefly at sub certain points you know, in this discussion. But essentially, let me understand, or let me hear from you what you understand of this whole situation, as you know, put out uh, from the party's perspective, the NPP. Uh, thank you very much. Um, the revelations, like you said, uh, I think it was uh, the audit, Auditor General's uh, report that exposed uh, these things. And so if you actually also read what uh, Honorable Seth Tepe put out, it looks like along the line some reconciliation was done. But you see, <clears throat> Ghanaians always have this uh, attitude of looking for something to definitely be wrong when uh, issues like that uh, uh, break out. And I, I must admit, uh, I'm a guilty party when it comes to this very issue. I, I couldn't wrap my head around why a, an honorable member of parliament who is also uh, a minister would have uh, excess money hit your account and one, you don't bring it to the notice of the paying authority that um, have been paid in excess of what I normally should be paid. And but that's the point. At what point do they, can they make that determination when their uh, salaries or emoluments have not been determined? Because these are persons who are subject to Article 71, and for that matter, their emoluments are to be determined by a presidential emoluments committee, which at the time was not set up. Yes, so at the time was not set up. As, as at that point in time, or prior to that, you were on a particular salary, right? And so until the, it has been determined that there's a new emolument that you are entitled to, it's the old one that you still own. So my assumption is that if something hits my account and it looks more than uh, what I'm required to have. I will first and foremost inquire for my bank if they did the wrong payment. If you take your 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 bank statement, uh, if it is a wrong payment from the bank, you will see. If it is uh, a payment from the controller and accountants general, you will see. You will know who is uh, crediting your account. And so, point is that at what point did the said person's notice, if at all, that they had been overpaid. And did they take that step to report and uh, possibly uh, return the monies? And that goes to, uh, that speaks to the issue of menstrua. Okay, because if it, it is not your intent, you didn't do the act, 
it happened to be in your account. But when it comes into your account, I think you owe, you have a moral responsibility to report it. That look, uh, there's something irregular here. Can you take steps to look at it? But that aspect wasn't done largely from the reports I have read. And for me, that is where the issue is. It's more of a moral issue, okay? Because in the end, the authorities from what said the is supposed to have done or said may have corrected it. And so uh, is there still some legal recourse in this instance if that has been done? Uh, I'll leave that to the lawyers. Mm. But I'm saying that if you were caught in this uh, double salary quagmire, uh, it is more of a moral question that you should be a high uh, profile person, have the moral compass to say, no, this shouldn't have been in my account. You take the steps to report it and have the money to treat. But if you did not and you went ahead and spent it, then the intent is there because <laughs> you are not entitled to it and you took it. Right. Now, let, let me come to you, uh, Honorable. So, Mr. Yama is raising a bit about the moral sides of things, but then what we have facing us is also the legal aspects or the legal sides of it, which, which is why the question about prosecutions would even come in and why we would, you know, very soon go into what Mr. Martinami do raised. I mean, I, just briefly, because yeah. those are allegations now, now, he's put I'm not, up. They, are, they have used a very simplistic understanding of the issue to approach it. Mm. They are viewing the situation that pertains to Article 71 of its holders as though you, as the host of this program, have been elevated to say program director. So, of course, there will be, there will be salary differences. Now, you, you, you exit from here, you go and assume duty as program director. You are taking salary as program director. And yet your salary payment as the host of this show didn't stop. Mm -hmm. They think that that, was, that is how it operates. No. This is a very specialized arrangement in the public service. For instance, I am still existing on the conditions of service of the seventh parliament. It has just been determined. So as a member of the eighth parliament, my conditions of service is not yet determined. So you're still receiving what you were getting under the exactly. seven. Exactly. So then there won't be any change. But for, for what oh, we're hearing... Hold on, hold on. So uh -huh. let me, let me. So when you, by parity of reasoning, when you become a minister as a serving member of parliament, there are supposed to be changes mm -hmm. in your salary structure. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen until sometimes after the, the term of that parliament, when the commission is set so, up. So, let's so, ho let's so hold on, this. hold mm -hmm. on. Now, when it is eventually determined, you are not even finished with the breakdown. But see, before Hold you on. go on, no, I get what you mean, but yes. let's get this part about yes. something Mr. Tekpe raised. He says, as a matter of practice yes. and convention, yes. Article 71 office holders, including members of parliament, yes. ministers of state and deputy ministers, are always paid on account, yes. awaiting the establishment and finalization of the work of the Presidential Emoluments Committee. So what I'm getting from this is that, yes, pending the determination by this committee, yes. you will be paid. You see, but the, are you saying then that? The, the on account <laughs> payment that he speaks of is not really on account. So what is it? It is actually the salary conditions or the conditions existing. existing. Okay. So but he wants there's to, nothing he, he's changed. He's using an accounting term. Mm -hmm. So it is something that is determined. You see, you see that. So why then wouldn't he say... You are continued to pay what you were taking previously than to say you're paid on account. No, not what you were taking previously because there, there may be a new person. Uh -huh. But you've been stated on, say, if there, there were deputy ministers who, there were deputy ministers in the, the sixth parliament when, or during the, and the NDC, when the MPP came. That was the sixth parliament NDC. Yes. yes. Now, when, when, the, when the MPP took over, those deputy ministers will be paid on the, on the mm -hmm. conditions mm -hmm. of service because it would have been determined by the time JM was exiting. Mm. You understand? So they would determine the conditions. So you, would, you wouldn't have been taking, you wouldn't have been on that condition previously. 
So that's why I understand why Tekpo want to say on, on account. account. Mm. But it is the conditions of service determined for the persons who visited during the life of the fourth parliament, uh, the, the sixth, sixth parliament. parliament yeah. Now, when it is eventually determined for your the situation, seventh. you too must have, you may have left. left. But when they are paying you, they even stagger the payment. They may put it out that you are due this. But when the payment is coming, my Richard, Richard speaks as if the payment will come and there will be a breakdown. No, government hasn't got money. That's what they tell you. So even though 10000 is due you, we want to pay you 3000 When that 3000 comes, they don't give you a breakdown. So you are actually struggling to determine which component of this is contained, this 3000 So if a determination is made by the, the accountant general, that pursuant to all these arrangements, excess monies have gone to A, B, C, D persons. It's just That's for them to return it. Mm. It's to tell right to these people. But they have decided to term it double salary, richer than his, uh, his people. It's actually not a double salary. But that leads us to yeah. the allegations being made by Mr. Martin Amidu. Yes. That he understands that, um, you know, there had been some or the Attorney General back then and the Deputy, sorry, the Director of Public Prosecutions had actually perused the case docket and had, as it were, established that a case, a prima facie case had been made and so prosecutions were recommended, but that didn't happen. So those are allegations yet to be proven though, but if that is anything to go by, then it suggests that there was indeed some double receipts of salaries. I'm not Receiving double payments, it in itself is not, not a crime. But the decision to keep what constitutes the, the second Over and above payment, what you are entitled to. Exactly. Is what may constitute a crime. But I'm saying that you, the recipient, very often are placed in a position that you are not even able to determine. So the determination is done by another public institution. Right. So, what do we do when that determination comes? Are you approached for you to refund? You see, I think we should be thinking of the commission of a crime if when you were approached to, to make the refund and you, failed. and you refused and not failed, then that is where we can determine that, oh, you actually, you actually are minded of, of come to the opinion that you will keep this money even though it is not due you. Mm. But once we haven't done that, we cannot put this out in the public domain that mm. persons have misappropriated public funds. L L and therefore, they should be prosecuted. Right. Look, Abna, you mm -hmm. and I know that. Docket, even, even the Republic often will enter and only prosecute <laughs> in a matter. Yeah, but at least prosecution would have started. I agree. Yeah. So, so the mere fact that a docket has been prepared, and some officer determines that there's a prima facie determination of the, of the charges that have been leveled against the, the, the suspects, and at that time suspects, but now accused persons. Right. The prosecution has not proceeded. In itself, it's not something that will bother me. Sure. But le let me quickly cross over to Richard. Because, Richard, the reason why this is of importance to me, perhaps, is that, you know, like Honorable was saying, there would be an opportunity for these persons to perhaps explain what happened yeah. and that would lead to a certain determination by the court that is if it actually prosecuted this matter but here we are no prosecution whatsoever has started and we are hearing all sorts of things being put out there by mr martin Amidu. and i must add that those are allegations as they stand but to the extent that this happened as far back as if you like 2017 2018 Nothing concretely has been done about it in terms of, yes, if there was any quote-unquote wrongdoing, then perhaps the persons who are alleged to have committed that or those wrongdoings should perhaps be brought to book. That, nothing of that sort has happened. So then there's room for people to go on speculating about whether or not it did happen or it didn't even happen. Because if indeed it did happen, why are we still where we are, we are at and for you know, such allegations to be made by Mr. Martin Ami during recent times? Thank you, Abuna. Uh, I told you in my intro that I was you are guilty. guilty of this. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, uh, well, more uh, disclosures. Uh, <laughs> yes, of uh, seeking uh, to see prosecutions mm. and all that, especially on this double salary matter, because it raised the red flag in me that if you are a minister doubling as an MP, and some money hits your account and you don't have the moral compass to report and uh, return it, then we are in trouble. But then you just oppose it uh, within Sir Tepe's explanation. And it becomes a bit problematic for anybody prosecuting. You have to have your fact right because you, you rush into taking a case to court. And these are high profile persons, ministers and uh, deputy that, ministers that matter, of state. Really? No, yes, no. You see, it it, 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 it comes to the issue of your the person's uh, image mm. and their integrity. If you do not get uh, your facts right, and you go out there, and mind you, we are within a political space, and you go out there and prosecute and fail to actually <laughs> make a case, um, it will be seen as a, a, a political witch hunt. And so whoever is going to prosecute this at the AG's department will have to make sure that they've covered all the uh, loopholes uh, with regards uh, to this. Because it's a highly sensitive issue. And some of us really were, could just not wrap our heads around. But uh, revelations are now coming that it was part of their uh, emoluments and all those things. Now, if all those things are ratified and in the end there is no indication of missing money or maybe as part of their emoluments and their, their end of service benefits, that aspect of the overpayment was taken care of, who am I to still insist that they should be pursued and prosecuted? My biggest... Uh, problem with Mr. Amidu. And in this particular case, that is where I think uh, my uh, brother and uh, Honorable uh, Ayene got it wrong. Because when this issue came up, I remember Mr. Amidu spoke uh, at length on it and actually used himself as an example of uh, a situation where he was paid double and he returned it, if my memory serves me right. So it gained grounds with such uh, a, a, an example, using himself. Mm. And he actually then justified the need for prosecution. For uh, our brothers in the NDC to make this an entirely MPP matter and then go back to first time and make those references, uh, I think is overdoing it. Now, if there are issues in our payment system at the Accountant General and then in a payment of emoluments, I expect that this process will address it and make sure that it doesn't recur. But I think Mr. Martin Amidu uh, 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 should take some responsibility. You see, when you throw out allegations like that and you indict virtually everybody in the country, the president, the uh, NDC MPs in Parliament, uh, the government, everyone, without any proof. Uh, you make things difficult for us, and then you make it look like you are on a, uh, some uh, witch hunt due to sour grapes or something. You had the opportunity. You had a special prosecutor. Point is that that office had capacity to go into this matter. If you thought that uh, nothing was being done about it. You could have initiated some investigations into it yourself and prosecuted. You were given an enormous job. And I, if you go back to my Facebook page in 2017, I was one of the very few in the MPP who had a lot of confidence in Martin Amidu and publicly gave my support to him to be, uh, to be appointed. By then, he hadn't been appointed. Then it happened, he was appointed, and I was excited. And I actually warned MPP that, look, this man's sword will cut both ways. So for the fight against corruption, it is a good choice, and let's all support him. And his mere appointment will frighten people from uh, 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 getting involved in corruption. But 
He has disappointed me to the core, to be frank with you. Because the very reasons why Mr. Amidu uh, resigns are the very reasons why he should have stayed in office and fight. And he's, where his epistles telling us that when the uh, going gets tough, he quits. And then you quit and put in epistles without any evidence of it. And we are all supposed to swallow it because it's coming from Mr. Amidu. I'm beginning to lose respect uh, uh, for him. Very well. I had a lot of respect for him. But you know what? For you to say that the president is connived with the NDC MPs to uh, 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 what to vet and pass all his ministerial appointees because they were under duress or threat of being exposed or prosecuted with this without any iota of evidence. Seriously, pardon me, it's, 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 it's below the belt. Right, well, again, like I, I kept emphasizing, these are all allegations. I mean, those cannot just be put out. It has to be substantiated. But mm. obviously, it raises issues, not the allegations per se, but the whole scandal about the quote-unquote double payments raises issues with how presidential emoluments committees are set up and you know, for them to perhaps be set up quickly so that the determination can be made early to avoid all these payments on account, as you know, Mr. Tete had indicated, as well as the payment processes and all. But we need to take a break. When we okay. come back, we'll wrap up on that and then okay. move on to look at Very the Operation well. Halt and the issues coming in from their activities. This is the key point. Stay with us. We'll be right back.